morning all. Now this is the uh, battery powered web enabled LED which I built in part two of my ESP8266 hack but I also hacked apart the file that came from the NodeMCU uh, GitHub site in order to make this work and I've since managed to get it to work with that file completely intact as originally intended and I just wanted to go through uh, the steps that enable me to get that to work and what's different about how it's meant to be used from how I was trying to use it. So I've connected the ESP8266 module with four wires back up to the CH340 USB to serial converter. The switch is on 3.3 volts, which is what this module requires. And I'm now going to start talking to this module again, uh, initially to delete the file that I put in here and reinstate the uh, file completely intact from Node MCU. Now in terms of software, I'm uh, using something a little bit different this time. This is a thing called Explorer, and uh, this is a, a little Java application which has been written specifically for talking to the ESP8266. It can either run in Node MCU mode, uh, also Micro Python, although I've not done anything with that yet. You can also switch it to the AT command set mode. So this is if you've left the original firmware in the unit. Here are all the AT commands as push buttons. But we're running with Node MCU, so I want this mode. Now, uh, just to explain where this came from, if I click question mark and about, this is Explorer uh, V0.1 build 206 by 4 refront. And if I visit the home page, so this application can be found at esp8266.ru forward slash explorer. And uh, you just need to make sure that you've got the latest version of Java installed. So do that first. And then there's a download link here. It just downloads uh, a batch file. And when that runs, it runs up the application. So using Explorer, let's open the communication channel. Uh, I'm on COM5 up here in the top right, 9600 board, click open, and it says port open 9600. Now let's just see whether the uh, ESP8266 is responding. I'll just do a file list. And yes, it's come back and it said that there is an init Lua file, and that's the file that I actually want to remove. Now there is a file remove button down in the bottom left corner. If I click that, it just says file remove nothing. I think it has to have the init lure up here in these tabs here. So that's not working. However, down here, there is a file remove and I can edit this uh, file name. So I'm gonna put init lure in there and then it should remove it. So I've now got file remove init lure. Let's send that. It said file remove init Lua. Now if I come down here and do a file list, it's showing that there are no files in the ESP8266, which is what I want. So I've now gone back to uh, github.com forward slash node MCU. I want the node MCU firmware. And in particular, I want the Lua examples and the one that uh, I based my uh, project on was, this won't scroll, uh, it's the web app toggle pin. And there it is there, I'll just bring the camera down. So here it is um, with Wi-Fi set mode, Wi-Fi soft AP, and I'm actually gonna use it in the soft AP mode. Um, it's specifying that the SSID is test and the password is 12345678. But for the moment, let's copy all of that and paste it into Explorer. So here in Explorer, I'm in scripts. This is a new script. I'm gonna paste it in here, paste. And that's the entire file. Now I need to make a few changes. For example, uh, the GPIO pin isn't one, it's four. And that appears here in mode to set that pin to an output. That's the pin with the LED on it. And then it occurs twice down here. These need to be four as well to set the GPIO high and low when switching the LED on and off. So I've made those changes. Um, they're here, GPIO mo mode uh, for output is now IO index number four. And that, if you look at the table, 
uh, of new I.O. indexes to GPIO pins. That's GPIO 2, which is where my LED is connected. Uh, also four here for the high and four for the low. And I've also changed the string of text that goes to the web page. I've called it the web enabled LED and the control is to turn the green LED on and off. So let's now send that to the ESP8266. I'm going to save it to the ESP and it now requires a file name. I'm going to pick this one, init lua and save. Now there's already a file in the ESP8266 init lua. There shouldn't be because I just deleted it, but this thinks there is, so we'll overwrite it. And now it's writing out all these lines of code into the ESP8266. Here's the uh, progress bar. And uh, that should now be in a file called init lua. And I'll just check that there is an init lua file by clicking file list down the bottom here. And yes, there is an init lua file and it's size 1206 bytes. So now I should be able to uh, disconnect these pins for the uh, serial connection via the CH340, put in my batteries, and this should, as soon as it gets power, should boot up, execute the contents of init lua, and run that original um, program to provide us with the web-enabled LED. But it works in a different way now. Now my web-enabled LED name doesn't really work now. Because of this statement here, um, soft AP, the little battery powered LED is now an access point. It's not really on the web. It's uh, putting itself out with the SSID of test and password of 12345678. Let's have a look at how that works in practice. So here's the, uh, what I'm calling the web enabled LED. And here's my Nexus 7 tablet. Now normally I'd be connected to my home Wi-Fi network, which is called Git HQ, but now I'm going to communicate from the tablet directly with the ESP8266. And because this is an access point itself, it's putting out a wireless SSID of test. So I want to connect to that. And then it's asking for the password. Well, now the password was 12345678. So let's switch to numeric 12345678. Connect. And now the tablet is connecting to test and it's now connected. But where's the web page? Good question. So I'm going to go into settings and uh, at the bottom we've got about tablet and in there we've got status and here we've got the IP address that the tablet is now using and it's 192 168.4.2 and this is the IP address that this uh, access point has given the tablet. Now there must be a DHCP server running in this uh, wireless access point and you can probably deduce from this that the web page itself or the server, the web server in here is on 192.168.4.1. Let's give that a try. So I've gone into Google Chrome, typed in 192.168.4.1, and there is the web page. Remember, I changed it to web enabled LED and then turn the green LED either on or off. Well, let's give it a try. Let's turn it on. Now, it probably hasn't turned on because it's on already, or at least this thinks it's on already. So let's turn it off and then on. And that's now working absolutely fine. Turn the green LED off, turn the green LED on. So that's how the web enabled LED, or at least that's how this uh, Wi-Fi soft access point is intended to work. But it's not really web enabled because the Wi-Fi con communication is just between my tablet and this device. It's not connected in any way to the internet. 